crazy, <laughs> weird. <laughs> I know how he looked like 10 years ago with his funny hair. I think Jeff is, is Jeff and he's not necessarily uh, an American for me. He's creative. He is just one big idea factory. That's just different. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Porter, calling you from Amsterdam. <laughs> Not calling. Um, hi. But this particular color is not your color. That's not gonna work at all. It will fail. But yeah, it's still tight. But you know what? That'll give you a, a chest instead of a birdcage. I don't. I don't need something <laughs> as tight as this. To no, to it's a, it's that is too tight. You're right. You're not as small. Because I known him like for 15 years when he used to be small. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of uh, patriotism just for the sake of being a patriot. I mean, the best part about being American is like being from America and not really living there. We are now together for five years. I think he's only been back once to America. But I think he's more Amsterdam than I am. He's really like now here for 20 years and settled down and he, he loves Amsterdam. He really can make from nothing something. Like this shop, he just, it popped up in his mind like last year, like, oh, I want to have a shop. Thinking, okay, but where do you start? You have to get, find like a, a space to rent and you have to find like the clothing. And then two months later, the shop was there. I was on the street for no good reason, actually. And I was stuck in traffic and car and I saw this shop here and there was this like little, British woman sitting in this empty shop with two racks of miserable Goodwill clothes. So I was stuck in traffic anyway. So I just, and I wanted to shop and then I just popped in and I was like looking, you know, through her two racks. And that's what, and I just, that's how I saw the, saw the, the whole thing and just like, okay, one and one is two. No one's gonna buy this one, but I gotta have it anyway. And I put it in the window every now and then when I feel bored. It's called Crackhead, <laughs> the guy smoking a crack pipe. <sighs> okay, I think they're pretty hot. Cool, huh? So I support the arts. Um, one day on TV, they were they did a little um, auditioning for a new reality show called Holland Fest Fashion Designer. So I just did it on a whim, but I did make it halfway through, and it was fun. I did it. I don't really care because for me, it's more important that I say what needs to be said, regardless. And she's asking me, who do we think we are? Sorry? Playboys. Right. Dandy Playboys. <laughs> so my name is uh, Michael Leroy. Uh, I run a recording studio in Amsterdam since uh, the 80s. And uh, as such, I came involved with uh, Jeff and Jeroen making music, uh, recording in Amsterdam. Of course, Jeff's background, the, his musical upbringing, uh, that influenced you as a musician and as a writer. So that, uh, and that combined with the Amsterdam thing of, the Dutch thing of Jeroen, made it a, a, a brilliant mix. And a mix that works for Western Europe and later worldwide. He has a very good feel of how to be on the forefront of what's becoming and of what's becoming next. He's always a step ahead. Martin said he had some trouble with his battery of his car, blah, 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 blah. Can we wait for him? Whatever. I'm not the kind of DJ who like worships the record and like, oh, oh, be oh careful and la di da. Like, please. I played this record 1990. I still play it just like that. It's good, it's hot. 
how to worship the record. It's a tool. So, yeah, sometimes you lose a few, or whatever. Sometimes you go to a party, it ain't happening. Jeez. <laughs> the best part about being in America is like being from America and not really living there. I mean, could you see me in America? It just wouldn't work. We lived in a kind of like affluent white neighborhood and we had busing, school buses, uh, you know, integration. So me and my brother were in, on this bus going to the black neighborhood. So we were like the only white, black kids on a white bus, as they say. And when I went to Virginia, I hated all of this, this segregation stuff. It was really, it was so, it limited me so much. And, I, and now I have to use these terms again, but that's how I'm so glad I don't live in America anymore because I don't have to think in those terms. But so we were living in this particular neighborhood and, and they shipped, they bust, you know, us to the other neighborhood. So we're getting off the bus, <laughs> you know, and nobody could really understand how these two boys actually with the northern in accents, because we were from New York. My mom was West Indian. So we were really people couldn't really place us at all. So that was already from the minute we landed in Virginia, it wasn't going to be an easy ride for us, you know. And I had a lisp and I had both legs and my mom was foreign and we lived in another neighborhood, you know. So it was, it, it was it wasn't going to work, you know. It wasn't. If I maybe went to private school in high school, things would have been a bit better because I was bullied a lot. So I, I didn't really pay attention to in school at all, like high school, junior high. And I think that was... When I look back, that was pretty bad because I was just I was just too tormented to be really busy with school. But actually, I'm glad that they, that I, I had the shop, and the reason why I opened the shop, and this is important, is because my psychiatrist told me that I had low self esteem. Once he said that to me, and I can I, a coin dropped, and I said to myself, "That is true. He's right." Because you think, okay. If you're already famous for doing something and it's good, and then you do something else and you're if it's bad, that's not good, you know? So that paralyzed me for a long time. And then I decided, okay, I will go try to live in London. And I was like, mm -mm. London's like third world. It's crazy. I'm not having it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to do anything in New York. It's just, it's just too much of an uphill battle. I'm, no, no. I don't think I'm going to leave again this time because each time I come, I go away, someone has to come and bring me back because I'm in a mess. Simon brought me back once because I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had like lost the plot in Edinburgh. So if I leave this time, no one's going to come and get me. So I'm going to stay here now. For sure. And then, yeah, I just decided, look, look. Any old immigrant can come and open up a fucking fruit, shit, fruit stand and be running for years. Why can't you open up a shop, Jeff? Fuck. So I did. I just basically needed to like stop watching Law and Order, get up there and fucking like do something and just take a chance and not be afraid of failure. Yeah, it's just great. I love the walk when I walk home past all the antique shops and the jewelry shop and I see the Rex Museum right there and it's all, everything's all fabulous and you know, I'm like, Jeff, you fucking made it, you know, because you have a shop right here and you are walking home right there and this is what you see on your way home. And I was thinking, okay, chill out because sometimes I'm a little bit too hard on myself, you know? You're watching TV or you start comparing yourself to other people or other things and then you, you lose the fact that, you know, you have nothing to fucking complain about. No, I never feel homesick or nostalgic. No, I live here. <laughs>
if I wasn't uh, here, I wouldn't know where I would be. 